episode of Roaring Tiger's Garage. Um, I'm your host, Steven. This is Joost Berkman. All right. Today, we're going to be working on a 2007 GT3. We're going to be removing a cup car style differential from this car. The car gets uh, some track time as well as street time, but the cup car differential is just way too aggressive for any kind of street driving. So we're going to put back in it the stock differential that has been rebuilt using guards components. Uh, we've got a lot of help from Bill Rader of Motorsports out in Las Vegas. He's helped guide us through this and we appreciate his efforts. All right, we're removing the first of the uh, under panels. Um, this one is attached with four Torx 20 uh, screws. So we've got to peel this off carefully because it's got a couple of tabs. Especially these are drilled to break it if you don't know what you're doing. So there's the second panel. That's also attached with a couple of, uh, to be more precise, the five Torx 20s and two plastic 10 mil uh, nuts. Next step after removing the underbody uh, panel is uh, removing these uh, cross members. One, two, and three. Gives us nice access to the side of the uh, transmission to uh, uh, then later on remove. Uh, uh, drive shafts, fill plug is here, drain plug is there. And of course, you never want to remove the, uh, the drain plug before you have the fill plug uh, removed. Please make sure that when you uh, put the lift arms on, that you don't cover these up uh, inadvertently. Same thing goes for the panel that was here. Um, it might get pinched uh, by the lift arm. There's three bolts, one, two, and then one here in the middle. Uh, three that uh, come out and then uh, these little diagonals come off. Uh, this one here is almost loose and uh, we'll uh, proceed to remove. And then uh, we have uh, basically uh, provided clear access to the whole transmission where we can, uh, can start draining and uh, removing the diff. We went ahead and loosened up the uh, fill line, which is a 10 millimeter. Uh, uh, fill plug on the, on the driver's side of the gearbox. You always want to be able to loosen that first because if you can't loosen it and you drain the oil out, you might be kind of screwed and getting oil back in. So, one, also, if you remove it, then it'll also allow the, uh, the, the transmission fluid to drain a little smoother and not gurgle as it's coming out. There's the upper one and the, the crush washer fell off with it. Always replace crush washers when you do this. Already loosened the, the drain plug here, also with the 10 millimeter. Uh, I've got a, a rubber glove on to kind of protect myself from, from the hot oil. And I also have a sample bottle here. Uh, we here at Roaring Tigers Garage, we always send off our oil samples and our uh, gearbox samples off to Blackstone Laboratories so we have a running record of what's going on with the health of our, our vehicles. So I'm going to pop this out, grab a sample, and we'll let this, that finish drink. Push up while you do this. You push up, you push up until you feel that thread skip. You know you're all the way out, and then just like that, no mess. There we go, sample in. I'm gonna let that drain for a little while. We have gotten to the point where we are going to be removing the uh, loosening the uh, drive shafts from the transmission in order to gain access to the flanges uh, that need to come out in order to take the diff out. Um, on each side, we have six Torx 55 bolts that um, are pretty tight. So we need to loosen these six bolts um, on, uh, on each side. And uh, as we have uh, engaged the handbrake uh, in order to uh, make sure that the, um, uh, the flanges don't turn while we loosen them, and then we turn them around, and then we do, we do the top three ones. After we remove the um, drive shaft flange bolts, we are now removing a center uh, bolt from the flange, 17 millimeter. And we are inserting two uh, jam bolts that uh, will now allow us to, it's already loose. All right, so we're sitting into the um, uh, gearbox and we use these two bolts to kind of drive it out. And now it just came out nicely. So we have a bunch of 13 mil bolts here come off before we can remove this flange here. Behind this flange is the extra a little tight in terms of reach. So we just use a box wrench 
We also loosened uh, a coolant hose bracket on the top of the gearbox to allow the coolant hoses to flex up a little bit. When we go to pull the cover off and pull the diff out, we're going to have to push the axle up out of the way. With all the 13 millimeter bolts out, we took a little drift pin and a slight tap of the hammer on the bottom here, and we have started to um, separate the cover here just a little bit. We've got a couple of screwdrivers. We're going to kind of work our way around gently and pull that plate out. We have our, our catch basin here just in case it starts to drip uh, liquid, which it most likely will. And so that's what we're going to do is we're just going to put the screwdrivers in here. And this is all aluminum, so you want to be gentle and just gently, gently kind of work its way. Work away around. Get a little bit bigger, get a little higher on the next grab. It's coming. Nicely. Everything's come off really nicely so far on the car. As you can see here, the cover's off. We did have some fluid drop out, so we, were, we did a good job pre-planning to have that come out. You can see the diff sitting up in here. There's a bearing and the, and the, the main ring gear, and that will just slide right out. We're going to have to uh, kind of wrestle it around some hoses and that axle a little bit, but it should just slide right out. So what we have here is we have the old differential unit here with the ring gear attached. We have the rebuilt stock differential here using guards components. Uh, we basically have to remove these bolts and this ring gear, put the ring gear on the, the replacement one and torque it up and put it back in. We've installed one of the axle flanges here in the vise using a couple of the original bolts that held the, uh, the hubs on. We're going to set the diff down on this gear or on this spline so that it holds it still and next thing we're going to do is remove all these bolts. We remove these 12 bolts, they're 17 millimeter. Now we're, we're separating this ring gear from the flange. Basically we're just tapping down opposite sides. We put a couple bolts back in so that it doesn't just drop down. Notice I'm using a soft blow hammer so we don't damage the ring gear. We have the ring gear off of the, the, the old diff. We have it all cleaned up. We cleaned up all the bolts and the part washer. Got them all air dried. Now we're basically going to put the ring gear on the vise here. And then we're going to put the new stock diff back on here. Onto the spline. And then we're going to put a little lubrication here. Slide this ring gear up. Put a couple of bolts in and eventually get them all in there and just cinch up the ring gear. We have the ring gear started. We have four bolts in here. We're gonna pull up these four bolts evenly and, and pull the ring gear up in place. As you can see, it's coming very nicely. It shouldn't be hard. If it's too hard, you're doing something wrong. Okay, so the trick here is to pull it up evenly. We finished putting the ring gear on. We put all the bolts in here drew up the ring gear, torqued these down to 150 foot-pounds in, in a cross pattern. Now we're going to take it off of this and we're basically going to go over to the car and put it back into the gearbox. Or as Bill Rager says, jam it back into the gearbox. So we uh, put the differential back in uh, into its place. Once it's in there, it was in there, put the uh, drive, shaft, drive shaft flange back in there and hand snug the 17 mil uh, bolt into the whole place. Here we've got the uh, cover plate. As you can see, there is a, uh, a rubber O-ring um, um, that provides a seal here. Um, in order to make sure that the, um, the surface is nice and clean, um, we wiped it down with a rag. We're obviously going to take some of the lubrication out. So I uh, grabbed some, uh, some oil from the, the gearbox and lubed up that O-ring nice so it will slide into place just, uh, just nicely. Now we're going to put the driver's side flange Drive shaft flange back into, slide it back into the diff. Remember these were slide right there. Seat it properly. Keep the uh, drive shaft out of the way. Snug the 17 mil bolt in there. And there you go. We're going to torque that to 33 pounds. The cover bolts here were torqued to uh, 19 pounds. Now we're going to proceed to reconnect the axles to the drive shaft flanges. We're going to put all six CDs in and those are going to get torqued to 67 pounds 
on both sides. So we have all the six bolts on this side in this particular hub. Uh, note that there's a, a clip that goes between each pair of screws. These six holes are not equidistant all the way around here. So there's a specific set, three sets of two holes that you have to get it lined up to. Once you get the first one in and get it you know, threaded properly, the rest will go in easy. All right, so now we're filling up the gearbox uh, with um, 75W90 Delvac Mobile One gear oil, which is what we use on all our Porsche gearboxes. Happen to know from history, this is about 53 pumps, so Yost is concentrating. 20. <laughs> And uh, when, it, when it just starts to overfill is when we, uh, we stop pumping and put the cap in. And that gets torqued down to a very mild 18 pounds. Then we're ready to put the diagonals back on and the panels and go for a test drive. Well, there you have it. Differential change out on the 997 GT3. Took it for a test drive. Wow, what a difference. You know, in the street mode, the car now is a little bit more smooth. And it also, you know, allows that different wheel rotations while you're in the corner. With a very tight cup car type diff, uh, the wheels get kind of locked and the, the wheels kind of chatter in the corner. Uh, not a very comfortable ride at all. We accomplished what we wanted to do and that's get the, the cup differential out, put the standard street one in with the slight upgrades with the car transmission components and uh, we're quite happy with it. Special thanks goes out to Yost Perkwin for helping me out here for about a half a day on uh, New Year's Day. Special shout out to Bill Rader of Bill Rader Motorsports out in Las Vegas. Uh, giving us guidance on what it is we needed to do, and also map with guard transmission out in Colorado. If you like what you see here on Roaring Tigers Garage, be sure to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we look forward to our future with you.